Caroline Duncan here. First and foremost, please subscribe to my channel, like my videos, comment in the box below, and hit that bell for notifications. So, let's talk Lakers. You know, there's really one trade that I'm going to keep pounding that I want to see this year. And this is simply Tyler Enos with Zubak and the the second round pick from Denver to Dallas for no, Nerlens Noel. The reason there there's several reasons why. Noel once he's healthy, he's a he he's a solid rim protector. He can easily become one of the better rebounders on the team. Uh, rebounding is something we desperately need, but he's also a very quick in transition, loves finishing fast breaks at the hoop, and I mean, he's just very athletic. He can fit the flow of the game, the style of play that we want to run. So, I also figure that his contract with his bird rights makes him very inexpensive op option at center even if it's if it's a backup role on his bird rights next year and let me explain now I'll, I'll get back to Noel so with that being said you're talking about the four and a half million so you're trading Tyler Enos his his salary two and a half million I think with Zubok and his one million so that's three and a half million you're bringing in uh, Noel, which is a four and a half million, so that's leaving us about forty six, about forty six and a half million next year in salary cap space, and we got the bird rights of both Randall and Noel, and I plan on keeping both. So hear me out. The first thing we need to do is call up Demarcus Cousins. We need to get him to Los Angeles, to the Lakers. We need to woo him with Tinseltown. We need to woo him with Magic Johnson. We need to woo him with winning championships on this young team. Now, if you do that, he is an improvement over Brooke Lopez. He scores 30 plus a night. He's a guy that blocks shots, protects the rim. He can shoot the three. He's very similar to Brooke Lopez in that aspect. He's just more dominating. Okay, this is automatic points in the paint. With that being said, the Lakers sign him to a four-year, $100 million contract, $25 million per year. He comes on. He solidifies the the center position for the next four years for the Lakers. Now, the Lakers then have about $21.5 million left to spend. So what they do with that is they immediately go out, stretch, and wave Lou Dang to put that up to about $32 million. They go get Sign Trevor Ariza for around seven and a half to ten million. He takes Corey Brewer's spot. Corey Trevor Ariza's younger. Um, he's a guy that can shoot threes better. He's probably more physical defender. The Lakers have a slight improvement in the backup backup from Brandon Ingram. Now. With that said, the trick then will be convincing Paul George to play on a two-year, $48, $50 million contract or close to that. You know, $58 million max. You have to convince him to come in and play for, you know, basically $20 million a year or for the first year anyway. If you can do that, and then sign somebody at a low-level contract like a Derrick Rose. You can use the bird rights to bring back Randall and Noel. And and think about this lineup now. You got Lonzo Ball, who is going to get better. 
you, you know he can pass, but you're giving him Paul George instead of KCP. You're giving him an improved and matured Brandon Ingram. You're giving him cousins in the paint. His passing's going to go better. His passing's going to improve ten times fold. Okay, but also with age, his scoring improves, his shooting improves. He's going to get more rebounds as he gets better, as he gets more confident. His defense is going to improve. He's going to end up being an all-round great point guard. You got Jordan Clarkson coming off the bench for him. We all know Clarkson's the sixth man of the year candidate. This guy is a monster coming off the bench. He can score just about any time. He's a guy that can get 16 to 20 points off the bench in both point guard and shooting guard positions. Now you got Derrick Rose coming off in third as the reserve, but remember, Derrick Rose, he's not much of anything, but he can attack on a straight line. If you need Derrick Rose to get to the hoop, score a couple points here and there, that's the guy to come off. For two and a half million bucks, you can pull in Derrick Rose. Okay, that's a big name. You're going to sell some tickets, and he's going to pick up a few points here and there. Now, your shooting guard position, as I said before, Paul George. You can't go wrong with Paul George. He's a vast improvement over KCP. He's a guy that's going to get you 20 points a night easy or more. He He's a guy that um, he really solidifies what the Lakers want to do. He's a guy that can shoot the three or attack the hoop. He's a veteran. He's the guy the Lakers have been wanting for the last year and a half to two years now. He's going to show up. Him and Lonzo, I mean, that's just, that's going to be devastating. You throw Brandon Ingram in there as another starter and whoa, okay. Then you got Josh Hart, who's improving, backing up Paul George. Paul George doesn't, I mean, he doesn't sit a lot. And you got Clarkson going to play both positions too. So Hart really is going to come in as a reserve. Don't don't be surprised if Vander Blue isn't in there somewhere as well. Now, at shooting at, at small forward, you got Brandon Ingram, who, as I stated before, is only going to get stronger. He's only going to get better with age. He's only going to become a better scorer. His defense is getting better. He's becoming a better all-round player. It's a matter of time before he becomes a all-star, superstar, especially when he's surrounded by an unselfish point guard, um, an all-star in Paul George who's going to take all the heat off of him, Cousins in the paint who's going to take a lot of the pressure off. I mean, Brandon Ingram's going to find himself in one-on-one situations a lot. And whenever he goes to the hoop and teams try to kick try to uh, adjust to Ingram, he's going to have multiple options to pass to, and he is a fantastic passer. So that's the element of the game that's right there that's going to make the Lakers dangerous. And then as I stated, you got Ariza, who's basically taking Cor- Corey Brewer's position, except Brewer uh, Ariza's even better. Then in the power forward, you got Randall, Kazuma, Larry Nance Jr. Um, Kazuma's a beast. He's going to be better as he gets older. I mean, to think he's only a rookie. Larry Nance Jr. may be just like a young Blake Griffith who can just jump and he continues to improve in other aspects of the game. But you're bringing back Randall. Julius Randle is your defensive rebounder. He's your best power forward. Um, He brings an attitude that you just don't want to lose. Plus, him and Cousins have this kind of Kansas bond thing going on. And those two could really motivate each other to insane levels. That's what I'm talking about. Those two pushing each other. Then, of course, you got the center position of Cousins, as I stated, one of the best in the league. 
vast improvement over Lopez, even though I like Lopez, but Cousins is better. You got Noel, who's very potentially a solid backup center, can come in, block shots. He could do a lot of the things Cousins can do except shoot the three. But he can push the pace more. And then you got Thomas Bryant. I mean, that's a Lakers team that could challenge just about anybody. What do you think? Do you think that's a solid team? Do you think it could happen? Um, let me know what you think. Hit that comment button or hit that comment box. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, like the videos, and hit that bell for notifications. Peace. Duncan out.